with the recent release of The Flash receiving mixed reviews at best. I think it's time we review the movie where Michael Keaton's Batman came from, Tim Burton's 1989 classic, Batman. The main issue I have with Batman is that he's not the main character. Great shadow animation. It feels like he's a side character in his own movie. It focuses equally on Vicki Vale, Alexander Knox, and the best part of the movie, the Joker. Hell, we don't have another Batman action scene 30 minutes after the last one. Besides punching and kicking, Batman is badass in his own ways. He levitates down, has a zipline gun, he plays dead, he has a safe spot for when the Batwing crashes, and the fact that he tricked Vicky into grabbing the thing is just amazing. Okay, it's hard to talk about the Batman character without addressing behind the scenes stuff. Since his mask never moved, he had to turn his entire body around in order to look at different directions. I actually kind of like it that way because it's quite unique. And Michael Keaton does have a good line here and there. Then he had a f this now you wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. I also like his introduction. I already criticized him for being a side character, but his introduction where he's treated like a random ass dude is freaking phenomenal. I also want to talk about his origin story. Bruce Wayne's parents' killer has been changed throughout different adaptations, but here, Joker killed his parents. I'm kind of mixed on this change. I see it as something more to appeal to the casuals. Similar to, Wolverine is the leader of the X-Men. Why wasn't Spider-Man in the Avengers movies? Why are there so many Green Lanterns? I also like that they trick us into thinking that these are Bruce Wayne's parents, only for it not to be. Make your Robin theories here. Speaking of the Joker... Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. Despite being low pitch instead of a playful clown compared to later Jokers, which is how he's usually depicted... Wait till they get a load of me. He has the dumbass symbolism, which is something I hate. The rest of Jack Nicholson's performance is really good. He does his own gun dance. Speaking of guns, he has his own cane gun, which he tricks into being a gun, then a cane, and then a gun, which is really cool. The fake smile is really scary and really good, and the fact that his skin is full-on pale white and regular human skin is just makeup is just amazing. Some parts even look scary. He handshake tases people until they're flesh and bone. He makes people laugh until they're just like him, via product commercial. While some people might find this specific scene stupid, it works because it fits into the Joker's clown persona. There's also this one scene where a bunch of mimes show up everywhere, which is really creepy, especially since they all have guns later. I also like that he promises people money, just to brainwash people later. Kinda sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, it's a Tim Burton movie, so it makes sense. And this shot right here is telling you that you're gonna have the ride of your life. We got two bridge buildings, a mix between steel and stone. We have the power plant with the machine exploding, also including green liquid, molds everywhere. Harley Quinn's, I mean Joker's origin. Sometimes a regular shot in general is just fun to look at. The Batmobile parking lot is pretty cool. I also like the design of the computer in the Batcave. The window view of the statues are pretty cool. We even got metal doors and sci-fi doors you would find at a theme park. So is this like an art museum slash restaurant? I have no clue what this is. I also like the design of this mask. Also, purple smoke. Speaking of Joker... I think this scene speaks for itself. He committed a racism. He also has purple curtains in his lair, symbolizing that he's a clown-based villain. I also like the design of this Joker car. We even got a Tim Burton version of a regular apartment. Now let's move on to the church. I like the auditorium. I like the staircase scene. The bell knocking down the staircase and barricading the door, and the design of the attic. Even the not so Tim Burton stuff, like the cultural armor is cool. I never gave this video its own action segment because the action's not that great here. I like the samurai fight scene, and I wish the fight with Gazelle could have lasted longer, and the bell to the head is pretty cool too. I have a soft spot for womanizer characters now because of modern day. This detective guy dies way so early in this movie and you can cut him without changing a thing. Harvey Dent is now Lando. The scissors on the Batplane is... fine. 